Hi, I'm Mike. The ranch is all about new life, and today we build a room that will be the beginning of thousands of lives in the garden with a new grow room on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Today is cold and miserable, with temperatures down into the single digits and gusts up to 40 miles per hour. The cows fed, the waters are full, and for us, it's a great day to duck inside and finish a project that we started last week. We left off after I finished up priming the entire room. I used a mold killing and resistant primer to seal all the wood and the drywall in the room, and I also used a piece of junk power roller that covered me in paint when I couldn't shut it off. This is the new grow room on the ranch. And soon after that fiasco, I went back to the old brush and roller and finished painting the room. Adding a coat of paint to the walls and ceiling and a special deck paint to the floor. After all that, this is what I ended up with. A room that is roughly 12 foot by 20 foot or 240 square feet that looks a little bit more like an operating room in our shop. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't operate on anything in here, but still it looks a little bit cleaner than it was before. My first thought when walking in is, wow, this is bright, but that's a good thing. And that's exactly what we're going for. All the white paint being a semi-gloss in finish keeps light moving around the room. The white color reflects the light and therefore the light is reflected back to the crops and spreads light more evenly. A lot of rooms will go as far as to use mylar reflective film. Now I'm not going to cover the entire room in tin foil, but for smaller rooms, it's a great way to keep the light working for you. Now that the room is painted and dried, it's time to tackle some electrical work. Now I have to preface this by saying that if you're going to be doing your own electrical, be sure to consult with a licensed and qualified electrician. Check all local codes and make sure that you're doing the right thing all the time. I'm going to be replacing the outlets and switches in the room, as well as putting new overhead lights in. The old outlets are probably vintage, but put in when the building was built. And because of that, I didn't worry about them when I was painting. I wasn't worried about them because I knew I'd be replacing them. But my big worry at this point was making sure that we have ground wires, as some older buildings may not have them at all. A good thing to do when you start any electrical work is to turn off power at the breaker box. Someday I need to go through the breaker box in here and actually label all the breakers, but the best way to know that you're safe is to kill all the power with the main breaker. With the power off, I'm going to be using a small hand drill that I actually picked up for the work today. This is a Works brand power screwdriver, and one of the best things about it is that it holds all the bits that you might need for a job like this, all loaded into a nice little revolver. You can pick one up for about 30 bucks on Amazon. It looks like we do have a ground wire. That's a good thing. Whoever wired this building originally used the push-in type of connectors on the outlets, which I don't mind, but they're harder to take apart when you need to, but easy enough with the right tools. A small screwdriver in the slot above or below the wire, and they should slide right out. I'm working on these one at a time. And that's for one simple reason, so I can replace the plugs exactly the way I took them out. I figure if they worked before, they'll work now. And this is the easiest way to ensure that. When I put in the new plug, I'm going to be using the posts on the side rather than the plug-in connectors. And by using a needle nose plier, I can get a little hook on each wire, enough to put it in the post, and then tighten the screw. Then on goes the faceplate, and we only have 10 more to go. Eventually, we come to our first switch. This switch controls the light in the little closet, and we do it much the same way as the outlets. Removing the old switch first, and old switch is pretty much right as it falls apart in my hand. Definitely time to replace it. After a few more outlets, then it's on to the main switch for the room. I've chosen to replace the original single throw switch with a motion detector switch. I love these things. I use them whenever I can. Closets, pantries, even our basement at the house. Anywhere where you might have issues with people forgetting to turn the lights off. And if you have kids, 
they should probably be on every single light switch. I turn into my dad, turn off the light when you leave the room. It's crazy. Of course, these things run about 20 bucks each, so it's a lot cheaper to just turn the light off, but in places like this, hopefully it'll be worth it. The switch is a breeze to install using the wire nuts, and off we go. To the next step, the overhead lights. Again, the original lights were old and dingy. These new lights are nice and shiny, and they're LED lights as well. Light and easy to install. Just anchoring them to the ceiling and then wiring them back into place. A zip tie helps keep the wiring out of the way of the LED strip. You do that three more times and you should have light. They may not be perfectly straight yet, but that can be fixed. First, we have to make sure that they work and that means kicking the power back on. But even with the power on, we have no light. An impact driver makes as good as any way to test the outlets, which work just fine. So there must be something wrong with the lights or the light switch. An easy way to check to see if the lights work is by removing the switch from the equation. Once we remove the switch, the two hot wires put together, the lights come right on. Although, if you notice, the camera doesn't like them. The frequency that the lights are on must conflict with the frequency or the frame rate or something of the camera. And we get this crazy dark bar when the lights are on. But off, poof, it's gone. The instructions for the switch say that a common problem is the ground wire. And if it's not installed correctly, it may not work. The previous electrician in here didn't give me a whole lot of room to work with, but after extending the grounded wire a little bit, I can get a good connection and the lights are back, along with our dark bars. Isn't filming fun? Now the switch is back in place, the cover's back on, and we can start completing a grow room. A little cleanup, the sink comes back in, and then Aaron's stainless steel table. Then it's time to build shelves for microgreens to grow up in. Wire shelves work the best for this, and they're super easy to build and put together. The second one is even easier. The wire shelves work great to hang our grow lights on, which are housed in standard four-foot fluorescent fixtures. They're hung from the underside of each shelf to supply lights for the plants below, and can easily be adjusted for plants' height. Next up, a small plastic greenhouse. We have two of these although we're only using one right now for early seedlings. All plants will start out in these greenhouses until after germination. Once they're strong enough, they'll come out, out onto the shelf system, but for now, these cauliflower, lettuce, and yes, even kale seedlings will be more than happy to acclimate to their new home in the greenhouse. Then we can add bulbs to the shelf lights. Each fixture holds two bulbs. We put in one cool tone bulb and one warm tone bulb into each one. This gives the plants the two types of light that they need to thrive before they head out to the high tunnel or the garden. Also, last but not least, a small infrared heater keeps everything toasty warm until the day the weather breaks and the plants can go play in the great outdoors. Someday. If you'd like to follow along this spring as Aaron modifies and changes the grow room and continues to start thousands of little plants, gets them in the high tunnel and then in the garden and eventually into the farm store for sale directly to our customers, please make sure that you go to our website, rwyomonglife.com, sign up for the newsletter because she'll be posting tons of tips and updates throughout the season. In the meantime, hit subscribe button and follow along with the ranch. This was a good day of well, staying out of the weather. But soon we'll have no choice as calving will be here before we know it. We'll be out in the snow and the cold, whether we want to or not, and we're gonna love it. Because we're not only gonna welcome new calves to the ranch, we're gonna save a few lives in one of the most deadly times here in cattle country. Come along, explore the ranch life, and escape the ordinary. We'll see you next time. Until then, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.